Hey guys, welcome to Slash Tricks Games. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a custom high scores table. And right over here we've got a just a basic background and then an object that displays the scores. To do so we're going to be using a 2D array, one dimension to store the list place and the second dimension to store the information. As well as an any file to store all this so that when we come back to the application all the scores are still there. So basically right here I've just got a random number generator that when I press enter it generates a number between 0 and 10,000. And then once I've got that, I click Submit, enter a name, in this case Pepper, click OK. Notice Pepper's score was 9382, click OK. Pepper's right at the top. So in order to put Pepper at the top, it would have to bump everything down, and then the last, in this case was an unknown with a score of zero, would be bumped off the list. We no longer need it. So basically to do this, we're going to be using um, for loops as well as the storing of data in the any file. So let's jump right into this. Um, to start off here, I've got three button sprites that just submit, they go back, or they exit. It's pretty basic. They've got a hover function that I'm using a script to perform. There we go, it's just the general hover script. And then the background is just this basic background that I whipped up. It's pretty pretty decent, I guess. Um, then objects, K. Object get score. This is pretty much just a random number generator that gets my score. You don't have to worry about that for your game because you'll have some kind of feature that gets the score for the player and then they enter their name etc. So just in this one this generates a score for me so I can demonstrate it. When I click the submit button over here that's where it's going to ask the player for the name. Now in my one I have to use a uh, the get string asynchronous function here to display a dialog box that doesn't slow everything out around in the background. That's the way I'm getting my name. Um, if you don't know how the get string async uh, function works it's pretty simple here. This is the text that it displays um, it asks the user to put something in, and this is the text in the box. And ultimately here, what we're going to do is, once we send this out, it's going to send a signal, um, and then the dialog here, we're going to add event, asynchronous, and dialog. It's going to send out an asynchronous dialog event, which this is going to pick up right over here, and here we go. We have a, um, a variable ID, temporary variable, and it stores everything from that that text box into a DS map and basically we're telling this to find the value um, ID right okay so it's gonna look through all the the, a the asynchronous messages that we've sent out and it's gonna find one that equals name because that's what we set it up to here left button name equals get string async that's what we've got it as name so it's gonna go through them and say well if it finds the one that's name then it's going to go through the DS map of that box and say if status was okay if the user clicked okay so if status um, is true it's okay then it's going to find the result and if the result wasn't blank it's not equal to a blank so if the person entered a name then it's going to store that as my global name now in your game I don't know how you're going to get the, the text from the user you can use this method um, it's just an option in my case, I've just used this for display purposes. Okay, so here we need to get right down to the for loops. So first, we open the scores.ini, which is located in your app data local folder, and then the name of the studio project. So whatever you've called your studio project, that's where it's going to store it. If you're using GM8, then you'll be find it just in your project directory. Okay, so it's going to open an any called scores.ini. And in scores.ini, I've got it here here it's going to store the array so at array 0 it's going to have name and then the username score and then score it's pretty simple okay so going back to the studio project um, oh I've also got a, a boot room over here and this boot room basically is going to create this boot room is going to fill the global score array with a whole lot of unknown variables. This is when we start, because when we start bumping stuff down, well, first what we're going to do is we're going to open up that any file, load everything into the 2D array, then we're going to mess around with the 2D array and then write everything back into the any file. That's the way it's going to work. So when the game starts, we're going to open that any file like such. We're going to start i at 0, make sure i is less than 10, because we only want the top 10 scores, and every um, every time the for loop is executed, well, every, yeah, every cycle, um, i is going to be incremented by 1. So first, global score array, i, which will be the first position, 0, 0, it's going to set to unknown, and then it's going to be 0, 1 is the score. So that's the name, that's the score. 
So that's going to fill up that array. It'll basically look something like this. Here we go. We've got global score array. We've got 0 to 9, so that's 10. Remember, arrays start at 0. First one will be Billy. In this case, we're going to have unknown for everything. It's going to first set everything up as an unknown. And uh, we're going to write that to the, the any file later on. Um, so once all of the values are put into this array, we'll start off with, for instance, Billy with 2800, Frodo 2100, and Jane with 52. And all the other ones will be blank with 0. So let's carry on here. Let's go back to uh, that submit dialog over here. Okay, so firstly, we're going to open the scores any, and we're going to load all the values into the array. All right. So the boot menu, the boot room, is going to assume that that any doesn't exist, and it's going to load a whole lot of values into the array, all unknown, all zero. And then it's going to get to this, and it's going to say, okay, let's do that again, but this time let's read and see if we can find some values. So score array i starts at 0. Remember, it's going to be less than 10. It's going to read the string. It's going to read the number. Remember, if we go back to here, that's it there. Number, it's going to read that. It's going to put that in the position of the array. It's going to read the name, and it's going to send an unknown if there is no existing number, right, and a score of 0. That's what it's going to fill the array with, and it's going to close. So we've ta we're taking all the values from that any file and we're jamming them into um, that array. So after this for loop has executed, our array will look like this. It's going to read in the values. If it can't find a number there, it's going to put it unknown with a score of zero. Okay. So then the next part is search for first spot where player's score is greater. So in this case, we're going to look over here. We're going to slide this over. If the random number generator gives us a score of 2250 and we enter a name of blips, so what we're going to do is we're going to start at the top, we're going to set i to 0, and we're going to go down the list finding the first spot where blips' score is higher. So it's going to go down to Billy, it's going to say, no, Billy is clearly higher than blips, so we're going to pass it. Blips is not higher than Billy, so it's going to go to Frodo. Then here it's going to realize that blips has a higher score than Frodo, so it's going to set i to 1. Once i is 1, that's what this part is doing over here. It's going to set, it's going to find out what it is. Once it's found it, it's going to, starting at the last element of the array, set each element to the one before it. So then it's going to create another for loop, starting at j, which is the last one, and it's going to be setting the last array element to the one before it. So we're bumping everything down. So 9 will equal 8, 8 will equal 7, 7 equals 6, etc., 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 until 2 equals Frodo, and Jane will be number 3 now. If we had to start at the top and start doing it, we'll set 2 equals Frodo, 3 equals 2, which is Frodo, and then all these other ones will be equal to Frodo. That's why we've got to start at the bottom and work our way up to i. See that? And to do that, we're going to set j equals 9, right there at the bottom. We're going to make sure that j is greater than i, so j is going to keep going until it's greater, until it gets to here, number 2, and it's going to decrement every time, so it's going to be going up. See? The arrow is going up. So to set those values to the one before, we're going to say global score array j, j naught unknown over here, is going to be equal to global score array j minus one, so nine minus one eight. This this unknown is going to be equal to that unknown, and the same with the score score array j one that's zero, is going to be equal to score array j minus one eight zero. So we're bumping this one down effectively. We're taking this value and moving it here. Then we're moving one up, and we're taking this value, and we're getting it from here. So we're copying that one down and moving up until we get to number two over here, okay? Because then that one will be equal to Frodo. Then, now that we've done all that, we'll be stuck with Frodo is 2100, and then number two will also be Frodo, and then 2100. So now that we've effectively uh, preserved Frodo's score and just bumped him down, now we can take blips and shove him into I as if everything's been moved and there weren't two Frodo's. So that's what this does. It says, we now take uh, score array i, which was this one, one with Frodo, and we'll just set it to global name, and we'll take the one position over there, which is this, and we'll set it to 2250. So effectively, after this has all run, the 2D array will now look like this. See? Belly is still at the top. Frodo has been bumped down. Blips has been put there in the number one position. And Jane's been bumped down, and all these unknowns have been bumped down, and then the last unknown at the bottom's just been thrown away, because we don't need it anymore. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much how these two for loops work. 
and then right at the bottom what we're going to do here is we're going to say now update the any with this new array so now that we've got the new way that um, the any should be sorted we're going to open up the any and we're going to start at i is equal to zero so we're going to start right here at the, at the beginning and we're just going to write the string i so it's going to be in brackets start at i is going to start here at naught right there it's going to write the name and the score so it's going to rewrite this entire array well it's going to rewrite the array to the any all over it's going to like delete all the stuff and then put it the way the array sees it okay so it does the name and then it puts the score array position i0 which is the name and then it writes the score position i1 then don't forget to close it it's going to close it and then it's going to show the high scores table so let's go to that room there let's go over here in our scores room we have one object called draw score so if we go there to draw scores to its draw event here we set up some uh, formatting for the text and um, just some spacing and then we just draw the text of that array because remember the array and at this point the array and the any file have the same data so we just draw that out and that's done now if the user clicks back all it's going to do is take in this tutorial it's going to take us back to the randomizing screen and if they push enter again it's going to rewrite um, the array it's going to sort out the array and it's going to write it back to the any file um, yeah so that's quite a mouthful of everything but that's the way you'd do a custom high school table well thanks for watching please feel free to comment rate and subscribe for more I do look forward to your feedback and suggestions I have had a few uh, YouTube subscribers asking me well how can they do something similar to this but base the score on time I'll be releasing that tutorial very shortly um, it uses pretty much exactly the same objects as this one only the time at the end will be in a different kind of format it'll look really cool and I've, I've made a little mini game in order to demonstrate that Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.